Hello there and welcome to another edition of Ask David where you get to send in all your gardening queries to me and hopefully I'll be able to answer some of them. So let's get on and see what you've been asking this week. First Rose has written in to ask how she can keep her begonias uh, through the winter because they're not bone hardy. They will survive in very mild seasons outside but in most years they'll be killed by the frost. So she wants to know whether there's anything she can do to keep her begonias from one season through till the next. Key here is allowing the begonias to die down a little bit, perhaps to pick off the yellowing leaves. Uh, and then before the first frosts, to dig up the tuberous ones, the ones with the really big flowers, uh, dig up those tubers and pot them up into smallish pots, as small as you can possibly do. Put them into some fresh uh, multi-purpose compost, hopefully peat free, and keep them in a frost free place, either in a cool greenhouse house or on a well-lit windowsill indoors, perhaps out of direct sunlight uh, during the heat of the day at midday, uh, and just keep them on the dryish side so that they gradually start to die back. Now once they've died back completely, hopefully that will be by about November, you can then lift those tubers back out of the pots, dry the tubers off a little bit, put them in a box, Keep them in a cool dark place, perhaps under the stairs, in the st under stairs cupboard or in a frost free shed and then replant those next March to start them back into growth. Now the smaller flowered begonias, the fibrous rooted ones, won't reliably come back year after year but you could try lifting one of those plants, one or two of those plants up potting them up and keeping them growing, almost like a house plant, right the way through the winter, ready to plant back outside. Now, as I say, it does depend on the severity of the winter. And last year, um, I left some tuberous and some fibrous rooted begonias in, both of which survived the winter. But then we didn't get frosts of more than minus one for a couple of nights during the whole of the winter season. So I think it's probably a bit risky to leave them in, I do what I say, lift them and try and give them some protection over the winter. Now Mix got in touch about planting spring flowering bulbs in ericaceous compost or ericaceous soil. He says he grows quite a lot of plants in ericaceous compost because they don't like the lime um, and so he wonders whether spring bulbs are okay to go in there. And the answer simply is yes Mick, you can plant any of the spring flowering bulbs that you're buying in the shops now straight into that ericaceous soil or compost and it'll be absolutely fine. The only watchword is as always to plant those bulbs nice and deeply. So remember to plant them three times the depth of the height of the bulb. So if the bulb is about an inch or 2.5 centimeters tall, then plant the bulbs once, twice, three times, i.e. three inches or 7.5 centimeters deep, and you're bound to get success. Karen's got a question about strawberries. She said in the first year after planting, she had some lovely strawberries, and then subsequent they've got smaller and smaller and smaller uh, and really she's wondering whether there's any way in which she can prove the situation. She does say that she planted them in a large plastic pot and I think that's probably the key here. That pot really of compost or soil or whatever you planted them in has become exhausted and also the plants themselves, strawberries in particular, deteriorate after about three years or so uh, and so it's worth either buying some fresh plants plants or rooting some from the runners that the strawberry plants will produce. Simply peg the runner down into a separate pot of compost uh, and allow them to root into that and then detach them and there you've got some fresh new plants to plant. So the, the thing I would do would be to scrap those old strawberry plants, buy in some fresh young plants uh, and pot them up into large pots of fresh compost uh, and then repeat that process every two to three years getting fresh plants either rooted from runners as I say or buying them from a reliable source and replacing your plants every few years and you'll get strawberries that you can really enjoy. 
Laura's got in contact about a cornice tree. She says that she cut it back hard to get rejuvenation because the plant had become rather overgrown. She doesn't actually say which cornice it is, but her complaint is that the regrowth that's been made is quite soft and she's wondering how she can toughen up that growth and make it more resilient. Laura, it depends what time of year you cut it back and why that growth is now floppy. I would be inclined to cut any plant that I want to rejuvenate, I would be inclined to cut it hard back just before it starts into growth in around about March time. Now, if you did it during the summer months or you've only done it recently, then the, the regrowth may well be floppy. So I would reprune it again this March, cut it hard back again this March. It'll drop its foliage this winter, come March, cut it hard back. Uh, and then the resulting shoots that it makes in the spring, I'd thin those out and leave just one or two or even three of the strongest shoots to grow back to form the foundation of the plant. As I say, it does depend very much on what the cornice is. The other way to make sure that you get tough growth is to sprinkle a handful of sulfate of potash around the base of the plant just before it starts into growth in the spring. Just one or perhaps two handfuls. Wear a glove uh, just to protect yourself from the chemical just in case. Uh, sprinkle that around the base or over the root ball uh, and that will wash down and potash has the benefit of toughening up plant growth and making it less floppy. And finally McFall has got in touch about anemones. Now the anemone wild swan that they've got growing in their garden that has got all sorts of little holes and bits of damage in the leaves and also in the petals of the flowers. Uh, and by comparison, the autumn flowering anemones, the standard uh, anemones that they've got growing in the garden are perfectly untouched. And the question is what's causing the damage and how can we overcome it? So here the wild swan um, is a summer flowering anemone it flowers early in the year and then it produces a second flush of flowers later on in the season and the foliage and the flowers tend to be a lot softer later on in the season and that means that they're more prone to damage from both insects but also slugs and I think this damage looks like little tiny baby slugs that are browsing on that foliage and also the flower petals and causing the damage that you're seeing. So the best way around this is to feed your plants during the grow growing season with a high potash feed to toughen up that foliage and make it much more resilient to being eaten by insect pests, but also by slugs and snails. You're making it less like a, a takeaway salad and more like a tough, leafy, um, harder, material that the, that the pests won't really want to be bothered with. So you can either do this by scattering sulfate of potash around the base of the plants just as they're starting into growth in the spring and then repeating it again in around July. The sulfate of potash will toughen up the foliage but it will also encourage the plants to produce more in the way of flowers. You could also make uh, two to three weekly applications during the growing season of a high potash tomato fertilizer. In the red bottle you buy a liquid tomato fertilizer and you could apply that as your source of potash and that again will also encourage flowering but it will also toughen up the foliage and that way I think you'll stop your plant being grazed and eaten in this way. So that's it for another week. Join me next time when I answer more of your gardening queries in Ask David.